very exciting day for Aquaholic. We're finally getting on board of Princess's X95. Now we saw this boat in build at Princess. Finally, we're getting on board of one. The first one has actually already gone. This is the second one in build. This was built actually for a customer of Dream Marine in the Ukraine. So it's a sole boat and uh, they very kindly allowed us nonetheless to go and take a good look over her and show you what she's all about. And she really is an absolutely fascinating boat. So we're gonna do the full tour, but we're gonna do more than that. When we've done the tour, we're taking her out for a spin. So stay with us. This one is gonna be fantastic. We're gonna step on board of here. There's a couple of things to mention, first of all, before we get onto the boat. This is a transformer. This will actually lie flat and then it cantilevers up and over into that position, or you can drop it all the way down into the water. It can be steps up to a key, it can be steps down into the water. But the other thing it does is it will lift up to a ton of tender. So you put your tender on there, it sits on the platform, lifts up and over and drops it into the water. So very adaptable, a very impressive piece of kit. The other thing that we've got on here, this one's got a huge storage space in here, which also can be used to store a jet ski in. So it's a jet ski garage, basically. So you can have your tender on here, jet ski in there, and you've got everything you need. There is an option if you prefer to have a beach club here. So there are various options on there. In fact, there are a lot of options throughout the whole boat. So we're going to step on board and show you everything. So this is the cockpit area. You've got the big overhang and some really nice finishes, like the way that they've done this teak up into here. That's really nice massive seating area around this big table. There's a center section that you can lift out. This is a bar area. It's an option. You have a server you stand up against the side, but if you want the bar area, then you've got it. And there's one more thing I'll just show you before we head on inside. And that is that there's a full set of engine controls in here. So that when you're maneuvering the boat, if you're coming alongside on this side or you're stern to berthing and you want to stand and watch the boat in, you can control thrusters, throttles, even the anchors all from there. Anyway, the really exciting bit is inside, so let's press on in and I'll give you the full tour. Let's go. So heading through here, as you can see, really wide opening doors, so you can really connect these two areas. There are a lot of options on this boat in terms of how this is laid out. So this is this particular owner's choice in quite a few areas through here. I think it looks really nice, in particular the upholstery and the woodwork, of course, there's different options of wood. This is high gloss walnut. You can have a matte walnut finish. You can have oak and either a gray finish or a honey finish. So a lot of choices, but this looks really classy. The dark wood and the light carpets and upholstery, it's fantastic. There's a 65 inch TV that rises out of here. So if you want to film night, that's a great place to do it. There's a surround sound system as well. And as we head on forward, you've got dining here at the minute for two, four, six, eight, but You'll see there's a split in the table here. You can open this out and you can sit 10 around there. It sleeps 10 and therefore you ought to be able to dine 10 and you can. Huge window on this side as well. So great view out of the boat. And then opposite that, again, owner choice. This owner's gone for this snug little area here where you can sit and have a drink. And again, fabulous views out of the boat. There's a bar area down this side, more storage over here. And there's an ice maker in there as well. Now again, choices. As you go further forward down the boat, you can have a main deck master cabin, which is what this boat has, but you can have instead of that a country kitchen. If you don't have the country kitchen, then the galley is in through here. Nice size galley. There's a sliding door across here. In fact, if we slide this across, you'll see the kind of marquetry and woodwork that's gone into this. The design detail is fantastic. Look at the way they've done these. It's beautiful. Let's pop that back and it mirrors into all of these areas. Very, very nice. Galley is here, really good sized galley. There is a door so that the crew can come through here and down the side deck and into the crew area without having to go through the main accommodation areas if they don't want to. And then here, of course, you've got things like massive storage areas. So this is all storage in places like this. These are Sub-Zero fridges and freezers. So you spin these around, these are to stop these coming open when you're out at sea. So when you're in port, you just spin those over as these are. And then you've got mountains of cold storage and the freezers are underneath. And then ahead of that, we've got Miele conventional oven. There's a microwave as well. There's the induction hob up on top. This is all storage up here, of course, tucked into places like this. 
and over on this side more storage and your dishwasher is here as well and then that's bins next to it so decent sized galley but as I say if you prefer you can opt for a country kitchen that takes up the rest of this main deck and in fact there are other options as well you can have a cinema up here if you want to there's lots of things you can do this forward area but let's take a look at this one Dayheads isn't here incidentally it's just as we're coming past like so and that is yet more storage in fact those are the two extra seats so that you can sit ten around the table if you want to so up here this is a proper super yacht feature with this huge master cabin you've got the big windows all the way around there's a window in the front as well and on that side and that is fantastic let's come all the way in and work our way around again lots of owner choice for these wall lights for example owner choice the bed heads the upholstery all that kind of thing this area over here this owner has gone for this little breakfast table but if you wanted to you could have more storage there or we could have a chez lounge there lots of choices and then we come all the way around here and this is the ensuite. You've got twin sinks. The toilet is down through here. There's an opaque door, of course, that closes across so that you've got privacy for that. Storage tucked away in places like this and underneath. And then heated towel rail and shower at this end. They will put a bath in here if you want, but this is by far the most popular arrangement. You can see it's a rainfall shower. Let's come out of here. All this is storage across here. There's a TV that rises up. This one, in fact, well, I suppose technically it's storage. It's actually a wine cooler. So you can keep things in there cool. On this side, AV equipment and storage. And there's a blind that goes across here. We touch a button just here, and you can see how that moves out and right across. And of course, it wraps all the way around. I won't take it all the way around now. Let's motor that back. Dressing table on this side, with a lovely view out. All very nicely done. The drawers here, and they've got some crystal in there as well and then big wardrobes down here with yet more drawers underneath this is a very long distance boat and I will come to the performance and the range in a little while but it is a sort of boat you might head down to and spend a summer on so this kind of stuff is really important same again on the other side So that is the main deck. This again, I'm not going to open all the cupboards because we'll be here for an hour, but just to give you an idea, this is the kind of stuff we've got dotted around the boat. Now there is a lower deck and there is an upper deck. You can see the upper deck steps going up there. We're going to head down first of all. And we'll head back to the VIP cabin number one. I love the way they've done this. It lets the light through. It's like a sort of partial bulkhead. They've also put a washing machine in here. There are laundry facilities in the crew cabin, but this is just so that if somebody wants to just drop something in there and do a light wash, they can do. And this is VIP cabin number one. And of course, if you opt for a country kitchen or a cinema room or a games room instead of that master cabin, well then this would become the master cabin for the boat. Huge TV in here. You've got a dressing table again over on this side. There's a great view out. Obviously, there's blinds that drop down for privacy when you need them. Storage along in areas like this. And then this is a walk-in wardrobe. Like so. Very nice. Let's head out of here. What a lovely cabin that is. 
The ensuite is on the other side. Again, this beautifully formed woodwork they've got in here. This is absolutely stunning the way they've curved this round. That's the ensuite. Similar in a way to the master cabin, just slightly smaller. So you've got your toilet down in there. And on the other side, the rainfall shower. So that's VIP number one. VIP number two is at the other end of the boat. So we're going back up towards the bow. Again, huge amounts of volume in this boat. This is so big. This feels master cabin quality. And the fact this is the third cabin is just remarkable. Big windows again, tons of storage again and this beautifully formed wood. Drawers underneath the bed, and on this side, yet more space for tucking things away. And the ensuite for this cabin, well, that's in here. Really good size. Rainfall shower and just beautifully appointed. Classic princess. I had to say it at some stage, didn't I? Okay, two more cabins to look at on this deck. And another walk in wardrobe. Remarkable. Okay press on. So these are cabins four and five. Now these are laid out as singles. You can power the bed across and make that into a double if it's preferred. There's also the option of having Pullman berths in here. So if you've got lots of kids or kids that want to bring friends with them, then the Pullman berth that will drop down is absolutely ideal for that. And there's an escape hatch up above that will take you up to the main deck if you can get up the stairway for any reason. Wardrobe in here, of course all of these are en suite, you wouldn't expect anything less would you? But what a great size again, really is no compromise in here, it's fantastic. Very nice. Okay, cabin five, on this side of the boat. Very similar to the one that we just looked at. And again, you can have a Pullman berth if you want. It folds out of the wall. Big wardrobes. And an ensuite. Perfect. So that is the main deck and the lower deck. But there is so much more to show you. Let's head back up this way. Back onto the main deck, and this time we'll take a turn around, we'll find another staircase, and this takes us then on up to the Sky Lounge. This is a real, again, super yacht style feature. To have this up here as a separate living area is just fantastic. It's got glass panels in the ceiling and they've put this just to diffuse the sunlight a little bit, which is nice. There's blinds that come across there as well. Lovely big seating area over on this side. There's a 55 inch TV that comes out of here. And also here is the helm station. Now one thing they've done which I think is great is they've put these doors on here. If we release these. You can now slide these across. Again, that amazing woodwork that they've put on here really nice and of course the same thing happens on the other side and the idea of that is if the boat's being operated at night then the skipper can be in there with all the lights dimmed and people can still use this area so that I think is a very useful feature let's slide that away again and then up here you've got a great seating area next to the helm 
and the helm itself. So all your usual instrumentation across here, radar, chart plot, that sort of thing. There is a bonding system on this boat, so this is the full control of the boat. So for example, we can go into AC power and see what's running and where the power is coming from. Or we could go into cameras. And here you can look at the aft deck, you can look into the engine room and so forth. If we come back out of there, another interesting one actually is if we hit lighting, you've got presets for the boat. So obviously there's individual switches all the way around the boat, but you've got, for example, an evening setting or a night setting or a harbour setting or a boarding setting. So touch of a button and you can configure the boat for all sorts of different scenarios without having to run around and switch all the lights on and off. That's a brilliant idea. The windscreens in here are forward sloping, so you've got a tremendous view out. When you're at this helm, you really are in a very commanding position. You're high up, you're well forward, and you've got terrific visibility. This, incidentally, up here is the ship's compass. In case you're wondering what that little fella is. These huge pantograph wipers. I think what we're going to do now is go out onto the aft upper deck and then work our way on around from there. So what I do need is some magic shoes. Yeah. So out here, lovely outdoor dining area. And again, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's not one of those boats where they sleep 10 and then you find that there's nowhere for 10 people to sit down. All of the dining areas have got room for that. Over here, you've got things like the bin. The barbecues are up here. And there's a huge fridge drawer as well. And then behind this area, well, you can lay this out however you want because it's got freestanding furniture. This owner's opted for this sort of layout, very casual, very nice, wonderful place to sit of an evening, have a few drinks and watch the sun go down. If you wanted to, you could have a crane up here and you could put a tender up here or a jet ski. So you wanted to augment your water toys, then you could use that as an area to do so. Over on this side, that's an ice maker and more storage. Okay, so we're gonna head down this side of the boat next. This is really wide, it's all along here. It's proper boardwalk stuff. You don't feel like you're crawling on a side deck. This is access back into the helm station. Another thing that we find here is down here. This is actually a wing station. So you can drive the boat from here. You can maneuver it and you can see right down the outside of the boat, see exactly what you're doing with it. And then something very special up on the front is this seating area and this hot tub with a waterfall. That's amazing. How nice is that? But we've not stopped yet. We can come down these steps. And there's another really lovely snug little seating area. If you want to tuck yourself away from the main party, this is the place to do it. You're sheltered. You've got views out across the water just fantastic and look at the size of the deck gear on here these bollards this anchor handling kit the anchors pull up alongside the hull I don't know whether you can see them try to drop the GoPro you can probably just see the flukes of it just there so that's where they come up to this is all lit up underneath here all the deck areas are lit really nice we can come back up here now That is wonderful, isn't it? Let's press on back a bit further. These steps take us back down to the main deck. That is the doorway from the galley area. And then we can come from there on back. And then back here, this takes us down to the crew areas. So we touch this button to release it and then that slides open like that okay I think I'll slip my shoes off again and 
this is the crew domain. So they've got a mess area down here. A TV on the wall. This is the fridge. There's a cooker as well up above. Laundry facilities there and here. And then this boat is laid out for three or four crew. There is an alternative layout for this, which will give you six crew. But on this one, we've got a cabin in here. So this will be a captain's cabin. There's a double bed in here. Of course, storage and hanging lockers and so on, as you'd expect. And this cabin has its own ensuite. And that's got a separate shower stall just there. And then there is a heads that can be used straight out of this area, so you don't need to go into any of the crew cabins to use it. So that's like that. And again, proper decent shower with a door across it and then come out onto a dry part of the compartment. Very nice. This is all storage up in behind here. And the other crew cabin, that's over here. So you've got two singles in here, and again, fair old bit of storage about the place. And up behind here, there's big windows in here, there's opening portholes. These are air conditioned as well, of course. You can see the air conditioning controls just here. And finally, engines. Let's check this out. Now these are a pair of MAN 1900 horsepower V12 engines. Really big, chunky engines. Now this boat will actually hold 13,500 litres of fuel. They're in two bunker tanks plus a day tank and there's a fuel polishing system so you can actually clean the fuel. And the big news on this was a couple of big numbers actually. The top speed is 23 knots which is tramping on for a boat of this size. It weighs over 100 tonnes and it'll cruise at 15 to 19 knots. But if you drop the speed back to 12 knots you're getting over 2,000 miles of range. So you've got some serious distance out of this. Other things I can show you in here this is a water maker, so you can create your own fresh water. Control systems, of course, for the engines. Fire extinguishing system. Generator is out on that side. There are two of those. And this is all the hydraulic systems for things like the thrusters and stabilizers and so forth. There's another way out of here, so there's a ladder up and through. And then if we come right around here, what's nice is that you can get right round both of the engines. So you really can get to everything that you need to get to. That is quite an engine room, isn't it? And it is, of course, full height. Let's come on back round. This is the fuel polishing system here. So, as I say, that actually allows you to clean the fuel. So if you have dirty fuel, you can actually take all the residue out of it. That is quite some engine room, isn't it? Let's go on around this side. As I say, access all areas. Very good. Okay. Let's head on back out of here because although the tour is complete, we've certainly not finished this video. The really exciting news is that Princess has said, while well, I'm down here, would I like to have a spin out on it? And the answer to that is absolutely. Let's go. Okay, so this is the exciting bit. Now, they're taking the COVID situation very seriously, so we've got masks when we're inside of the boat, and quite rightly so, I think it's very sensible. But um, the exciting bit is, we're going poaching on an X95 and you guys are coming with us. Let's go and do it. The 
wing station in use up here and that's giving a perfect view out down the outside of the boat, exactly what's needed. Now it's probably worth pointing out that it is properly windy today. I mean, we're talking getting up towards a gale force eight. This is not the sort of conditions that you might take a boat like this out on for a leisure cruise, but that's brilliant because we're gonna really see what this boat will do when it's put to extremes. This is gonna be superb. they've come around here and then use the engines to spin it like that, point us down the way we want to go. Exciting times. I honestly feel like a five-year-old being taken out on a super yacht, which is basically what I am. Let's go and see what's going on inside. Now we have all the cushions piled up in here because we are quite likely to ship a bit of water on account of the fact that we're about to punt a hundred tonne of boat through big seas. But in here all is peace and quiet. So this is Ben, the man behind the wheel. What's it like driving an X95, Ben? Yeah, it's lovely, it's great. Yeah? Yeah. And what's it like getting out of that berth because there's a lot of wind blowing and it's a really high boat. Yeah, it handles really well. Look at this. Well, like any other princess really yeah yeah, yeah that's amazing there's certainly plenty going on here Quick bit of drone footage, <laughs> exciting stuff. So while the drone is flying around the boat, we're having a socially distanced floor party in the master cabin, just to say out a shot. Say hi everybody. Hello. Hi. <laughs> they know how to have a good time at Princess Yachts. <laughs> Eat good now. We are out in the English Channel proper and there's some big waves now out here actually coming over the boat. It's quite incredible and yet it feels utterly planted and utterly effortless in here. We're doing 16 knots. It feels like six. Here we go. It's quite a big swell out there now. And this is what these boats do. Some people say they're marina queens, they're not. They are absolutely designed to come out and do this kind of stuff. You might not want to do it for fun, but you can certainly do it. But this is um, 
Yeah, this is offshore boating. I would not like to be out here in Smuggler's Blues right now. I think it'd be phoning for a helicopter. But we are just cruising gently through this at 15 knots. It doesn't even feel like it. It feels like doing six. And the most amazing thing is just how quiet this boat is. Well, I don't know if you can see that. Let's have a look out of the windscreen a bit more. This is why we have the covers on the seats. So the last thing that remains really is for me to have a little go at yeah. driving it. So, uh, would that be all right, Ben? Yeah, you, yeah, carry on. Awesome, right, here we go. Okay, so here we go. We're doing three knots at the minute. We've got a pair of 1,900 horsepower V12 MAN engines. Let's see what that feels like. So that's into gear. And we'll build on some revs. I can see it accelerating on the screen, but I actually can't feel it. That's nine knots, 10 knots, 11 knots, considering that this is over a hundred tonne of boat, punching through some serious seas, it's unbelievable. Just can't feel a thing. It's so super smooth and so super effortless. The only reason that we know that it's rough out there is a little bit of vertical motion and a lot of spray hitting the windscreen. Okay, so we're cruising now 14 knots. That's a nice cruising speed. Put it on autopilot now, sit back. Next stop, Guernsey. But I think they might want their boat back in Plymouth, so we'll turn her around. We'll head her back. Is that okay to leave them around? Yeah, you carry on. Okay. Right on your side. Yeah, okay. Sure. Okay, let's power back to Plymouth. We'll go with some revs. Got 17 knots, 18 knots, 19 knots. Picks up amazingly for such a big boat. 20 knots now. Still more to go. That's got some proper power actually. Let's give her a quick run up to full power. Now it's in big seas, so it's probably not going to reach its maximum speed. It is 23 knots which is about what it does flat out, so that, I wasn't expecting that. It's so quiet. I know I've got this other microphone on, but it's not actually connected to the GoPro. That's the other end. The GoPro's all the way over there, so you're getting genuine ambient noise levels. 20, touching 24 knots, and it's just so quiet, so unbelievably quiet. Anyway, it is a new boat. Let's not thrash it. Let's bring it back. Okay, there we go. That is doing about 1700, 1700 RPM, it's about 15 knots, and that's a really comfortable cruising speed. Very, very impressive, and a lot of fun in these conditions. Now, of course, when we're out on these boats, there is one shot that I have to show you, and that is from down here in the VIP guest cabin because this is always spectacular. So we're at water level now and there you go that's what a hundred plus tonne of boat at 16 knots looks like. Let's go and check the other side. That's really pushing through some water and it's so quiet, even down here. We're just ahead of the engines. All we can hear is just a gentle hum. It's unbelievable. And it is spectacular. Actually, down here you can get an appreciation of the wave size because <laughs> occasionally you can look up at them. I don't know whether you can see it just there. The camera does tend to flatten out the waves and we are into a calmer area now, but yeah, a couple of times I've been down here looking up at the waves, which is pretty spectacular. But this is amazing, isn't it? What an incredible, incredible machine and what an experience as well. Thank you so much to Princess Yachts for organizing this. I've been looking forward to it all year and I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. Let me know what you think of the boat in the comments. 
and um, as ever if you're not subscribed do hit that little button we've got loads more great stuff coming we'll catch you again soon take care bye bye